Hello and welcome to another tech video on this channel. Today we are going to talk about namespaces in Kubernetes. A little brief about myself, I am Ajit. I work as a cloud and DevOps architect with one of the leading cloud consulting companies in India. Apart from that, I am also recognized as an AWS ambassador and a community builder. So before we begin, let's first understand the concept of namespaces in general. Namespace is like packaging many things into a single pack. Imagine a namespace as a drawer in which you can put all kinds of things, a pencil, a ruler, a piece of paper and so forth. To avoid using each other's items, we decide to label the drawers so it's clear what belongs to whom. On similar lines, a namespace in Kubernetes is nothing but a logical segregation of workloads. In simple words, it is a cluster within a cluster. Here, for example, we have alpha, beta and gamma namespaces. Once you provision a Kubernetes cluster, it starts with four initial namespaces. The default namespace, the kube node lease namespace, the kube public namespace and the kube system namespace. When you don't specify any namespace while creation of the Kubernetes objects, they are created in the default namespace. The kube node lease namespace holds lease objects associated with each nodes. Node leases allow the kubelet to send heartbeats so that the control pane can detect node failure. The kube public namespace is mostly reserved for cluster usage. The kube system namespace has all the components related to your Kubernetes cluster. We will talk about this once we get into the cluster. I have logged into the Kubernetes master. The kubectl get ns command will give you the list of namespaces. Another way of getting the list of namespaces is by executing kubectl get namespaces. Here you can see all the four namespaces that we discussed earlier. Now let's try to get the list of pods. As expected, you can see no resources found in the default namespace. Now let's try to create a sample pod using the command kubectl run web server hyphen hyphen image nginx and see what happens. We can see a pod has been created and it has been created in the default namespace. As discussed earlier, let's see which pods are deployed in the cube system namespace. So here we see all the controller components that is core DNS, etcd, API server, controller manager, proxy, scheduler and vivnet that has been deployed by me for CNI. I'll create a separate video around controller components and explain each of those in detail. Now let's do a hands-on demo on creating a namespace in Kubernetes. Let's see the list of namespaces that we have. Create a new namespace using the imperative command kubectl create ns api-1 here the api-1 is the name of our namespace we can see that the namespace has been created we created the namespace using imperative commands now let's do it the other way that is using a configuration yaml file for that we have already created a file called myns.yaml let's open that and see the configuration. API version is v1, kind is namespace and the metadata name is our namespace name. I'll provide all the links to the configuration and the commands in the video description. Apply the configuration file using the command kubectl apply hyphen f and the name of the file. We can see that the namespace api-2 has been created. We have seen how to create a namespace. Now let's try to deploy a pod in the namespace that we just created. We are going to deploy the pod in the ASI-1 namespace. Firstly, let's try to create the pod using the imperative method that is running the command kubectl run api-pod-1 
hyphen hyphen image equals to nginx hyphen n for the namespace asi hyphen one. We can see the message that the pod has been created. Let's see whether the pod has been created as expected in the ASI hyphen one namespace using the command kubectl get pods hyphen n API hyphen one. Now let's try to deploy the pod using the other way that is using the configuration YAML file. We have already created the file my hyphen pod dot YAML. Let's try to open that file and see the contents. Kind is pod. Name is ASI hyphen pod hyphen two. And the most important namespace is ASI hyphen one. Container image is nginx, and container name is nginx. Let's close the file and try to apply the configuration file using the command kubectl apply hyphen f my hyphen pod dot yaml. We can now see that both the pods have been created and they are up and running. So the creation of pods in a specific namespace is done. Let's see how to delete a namespace in action. Run the command kubectl get ns to get the list of namespaces. Now we have to delete the namespace asi hyphen two. The command for the same is kubectl delete ns and the name of the namespace that is asi hyphen two. We can now see that the namespace has been deleted. It is very important to know that not all resources in Kubernetes are namespaced. The scope of some of the resources is at cluster level and not at the namespace level. We can get the list of all namespace resources using the command kubectl api hyphen resource hyphen hyphen namespaced equals to true. Some of the examples are pods, config maps, services. Secrets, etc. Similarly, if we pass namespaced equals to false, we will get a list of cluster level resources. For example, nodes, persistent volumes, cluster roles, etc. Now let's have a look at some real life scenarios where namespaced can be utilized. So the use case number one would be implementing all lower environments in a single cluster. So that we can deploy our application without changing the naming convention of all the deployments and its components. This way, we would also save on infrastructure costs. So we will create the following namespaces: Dev, QA, UAT, and SIT. Use case number two would be segregating namespace on the basis of purpose of the deployments. Logging namespaces will have tools like Elasticsearch and Kibana. Monitoring will have tools like Prometheus, Grafana. Security namespace can have InfoSec and DevSecOps tools. And finally, we can have application specific namespaces. Use case number three would be creating namespace on the basis of teams. Some large organizations have multiple teams and sometimes it becomes hassle free if we divide the cluster into multiple namespaces for individual teams. So these were some of the real life use cases. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, hit the like button. If you have any feedback, please let me know in the comment section.